Welcome back everyone. This is Ian bringing you another video in this AI series with the new Boston. In today's video, we're going to talk about something called embeddings. So what are embeddings? Let's go straight to the source. This is the OpenAI documentation. And the answer to that question is OpenAI's text embeddings measure the relatedness of text strings. So it has some things that they're commonly used for listed here, search, clustering, recommendations, anomaly detection, diversity measurement, and classification. Specifically in this video, we're gonna use it for text similarity. So we'll pass a word or multiple words into the embeddings function. And then when it comes back, we'll use some math to figure out the relatedness or the closeness of those two words. It's gonna give us a score. And then based on the value of that score, we'll be able to determine how similar two words are to each other. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with embeddings. I highly encourage you to go to the documentation, go through here and see what all you can do. We're specifically going to be using this example here to just create an embedding. And then we'll use some math, something called cosine similarity to calculate a score to determine how close two different words are to one another. So when we send a request to the OpenAI embedding API, what we get back is this embedding object here. And so inside of it, it has a list called data and that has one or more objects that include the embedding data. Each embedding is going to look like a list of floating point numbers, negative or positive, and there will be a lot of them in there. In this case, specifically 1,536, but it could be less or more based on the model that you use. But there's some other information here, like the index of that specific object inside of the data list, and then what type of object it is. In this case, it's an embedding object which model is used with the request, what type of object it is, in this case it's a list, and then how many tokens you used for your prompt and your total tokens with the overall usage of the request. Before we dive into the actual code, let's talk a little bit about embeddings so that you can get a visual overview of exactly what they are and how they work. So if we scroll back up here, we can see that this embedding is a list of numbers. And essentially, numbers that are closer together in separate lists will help us determine how close the words that those numbers are derived from are to one another, how similar they are. If we look at this right here, you can see I have this kind of world mapped out and I've got these islands and on each island there's a word. Notice that words like cat and feline and purr and lion are all very similar, all very close to each other because they're similar. And then you have something like dog or animal, which isn't too far away because, you know, both a cat and a dog are animals. And then we have things like eel and elephant. They're kind of a similar distance from animal as are cat and dog. But then you have something like microscope, which is way over here on the left, far away from everything because it's not really similar to these other words. We use something, in this case, we use cosine similarity which is a mathematical equation that helps us determine how close each of these islands are to one another. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take these words from these islands and we're going to pass them through this embedding function or we're gonna send them up to the embedding API, I should say. And what we get back are these embeddings. And so then we'll use the embeddings with that cosine similarity function, which is just a mathematical equation. It's gonna give us a number and that number is gonna help us determine how close these islands are to one another. That'll help us know how similar the words are. So cat should be closer to feline than cat is to microscope, or cat should be closer to feline than elephant is to microscope, things like that. There's one last thing I want to show you before we jump into the code, and that is this YouTube video by StatQuest with Josh Starmer. It's called Cosine Similarity Clearly Explained. This is a great video. It helped me better understand this concept. It's really short, only 10 minutes. So if you want to learn more about the math behind figuring out the similarity between these different words with their embeddings, then this is definitely a video for you. Well, let's go ahead and jump over to the code now, and we'll see how this actually works with sending the requests up to OpenAI. We are going to import something called NumPy. That'll let us do the mathematical equation for the cosine similarity. And then of course we need to bring in OpenAI library and create a new client from it. Now that we have that client, we can actually send requests up to the embedding API. Okay, so then we have a function here called cosine similarity. So again, if you want to understand the math happening behind the scenes for cosine similarity, check out that video that I referenced. But just know that what we do is we pass in two values. 
The values here are going to be the actual embeddings, so the vectors for each of the words, and then we're going to get a score calculated for how close they are together. A value between zero and one, if it's zero, they're not similar at all. If it's one, they're very similar, and any value in between will allow us to determine just how close or far away they are from one another. The next function that we have here is get embedding. So this is going to be our call to the client, the OpenAI API embeddings endpoint. So the reason I put this inside of a function here is because we're going to use it multiple times inside of this program. I didn't want to repeat ourselves, so I went ahead and wrapped it in a function called get embedding. So get embedding is going to take an input. If we pass in one single string value, it's just going to give us one embedding. If we pass in a list of multiple string values, it'll give us an embedding for each of those strings. And then we just want to pass in the model that we want to use. So you'll see the model here in a second. But essentially, this function is going to return the response from calling client.embeddings.create. It passes in our input and our model, and then it sends us back an object like the one that we looked at in the documentation a moment ago. From that, we can pull out the actual embedding. So down here, we have a constant variable called model. We're going to use the same model across all these requests. And we only want to change it in one place if we decide to use a different one in the future. So for now, we're using text embedding ADA002. This is the most recent model, and it's said to perform better and be cheaper to use than all of the earlier models, which are now deprecated. So down here, we have our first response that we get back from calling get embedding and passing in our input of corn and then the model text embedding ADA002. From that, we're going to go ahead and print the response, and you'll see it is a expanded version of the example output that we saw in the documentation a moment ago. You'll notice whenever we actually get to that point that the embedding itself has a ton of values inside of it. And that's because, like I mentioned, it's 1,536 total values inside of that vector. So then we're going to print the length. That'll confirm that number that I just said, 1,536, and that'll determine how many values are actually inside of that embedding. And then the next one is going to be similar here, but instead of passing in a single string for the input, we're going to pass in a list with multiple strings. What will happen here is we'll actually get back an embedding for each one of these strings. So instead of just having data zero dot embedding, we'll have data zero and data one, and then each of those will have an embedding inside of it. Then we can assign those embeddings to variables here, A and B, and we can pass them into our cosine similarity function, which will then return a score. Ultimately, we will print out the score, helping us see the similarity between the words that were inputted, in this case, cat and feline. We'll do that again with words that aren't so similar, elephant and microscope. If you remember our islands from earlier, elephant was all the way over on the right, and microscope was way over on the left. So the value that comes back from this get embedding the score that's calculated should be lower than the one that we get back for cat and feline, which were closer together in our island example. So again, we're going to extract the embeddings from that response. We're going to pass them to cosine similarity. That's going to calculate a score. And then we're going to print out that score here. Let's go ahead and open up our terminal. We'll run this code and we'll see what it looks like in real time. So here we are in our terminal. We're inside of the AI Playground repository the OpenAI examples folder, and then inside of that, the 13 embeddings folder. There's a file inside of there called main.py. So we'll go ahead and run that with Python main.py. And that file is the one that holds all the code that we were just looking at. So we'll let that run. It'll send the request out. And the first thing we should see is a giant list of these values. So if we scroll up to the top here, you can see there's just a ton of these. And so these are all the values inside of our embedding. And so here you can see data is a list, and then it has an embedding inside of it, which is another list that has a ton of values. So if we scroll all the way down past all of these values, we should be able to see 1,536 total values inside of that embedding. Now, what we're really concerned with here is the output of the scoring for the last two function calls, the one for cat and feline, and then the one after that for elephant and microscope the similarity score between cat and feline is 0 0.8545 blah 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 and then the similarity score between elephant and microscope is 0 0.7937 yada yada and so you can see right out of the box elephant and microscope because they're further away they score lower than cat and feline and that's basically it we got an embedding from our initial call so if we scroll up and we look here we got an embedding for corn 
and that's the one that we saw here with all these values. And then we also did the same thing for cat and feline. We didn't actually output the response, but what we did do is take those two embeddings that we got back for each of those words, passed them to our cosine similarity, got our score, and then printed it. We repeated the same process for elephant and microscope, and then we were able to determine how similar or how close those words were together with regards to their embeddings. So that's how you get embeddings with OpenAI's embedding API. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Can't wait to see you in the next one. Until next time, peace.